Krista Van Zandt does across the net. Penn State is the higher seed in their home whites. And a net violation on Washington Point Penn State. The Huskies are in their road purples, even though it's a short road from Heck Ed Pavilion. Their home court's only about 15 miles away. And essentially a home match over 17,000 on hand, the majority in purple tonight here in the national semis. And there is Deja McClendon, number 18 for Penn State, pushing it wide. Point Huskies. It's a rarity when you get an opportunity to play for a title at home, but the teams in the history of this tournament that have, have been extremely successful. Katie Slay at 6'6", the tallest on the floor. Point Huskies. Home teams in your, in your home gym or in your home city or area, well, five times it's happened and five times the home team has been a winner, including USC beating UCLA in Los Angeles in the 1981 final. Micah Hancock, the two-time Big Ten setter of the year out of Edmond, Oklahoma, injured in last year's national semifinal and that proved lethal to Penn State's title chances as they got knocked out. A touch and a point for UW. Well, so far we're seeing lots of assertive swings hitting the perimeter of the court. Krista Van Zandt coming up with a couple and then Kyla Munoz for Washington. Same thing from Deja McClendon. I like how both teams are coming out to go get it and not wait for the opponent to make errors. Jenny Nagaris, the senior from Puerto Rico with the serve. And Cox up slay, it's blocked. Nagaris looking for Van Sant, gets it down for the kill and look at the emotion early on from the Huskies. That's another quality swing, and you see it doesn't go right toward the right back or the middle back player. She splits the seam. That's a great spot to hit if you're a left side attacker. Ariel Scott, the two-time All-American for Penn State, gets the kill. And Krista Van Sant, her mom was a basketball player. She was the National Player of the Year coming out of high school. And she had a huge regional final of 30-30 with 38 kills to beat USC. And she had absolutely nothing left, as all of her teammates did in that monster match with USC. She broke down right afterwards, and luckily they've had five days to regroup. Both these teams survived the ultimate test. Penn State, on the other side, was down 9-6 in the fifth set to a very solid Stanford team and came back to win. Confusion on the Washington side. You don't see that very often. They've played with a very consistent lineup all through the through the season. They should know each other well enough by now not to have that ball fall. These two teams did not meet during the regular season, which saw Penn State go 32 and 2 and Washington go 30 and 2. And the second net pile, the net violation of this first set point, you don't. Sometimes that happens when you're trying so hard to block the ball that you end up putting yourself a little too close to the net and you end up touching it, and that's happened for both teams. Melanie Wade serving in the middle at 6 4. And another point for Washington. Huskies have come out serving tough. Yep, they're going at Megan Courtney quite a bit, and she puts this ball over. Penn State has to stay with it, though. Micah Hancock made a nice touch on that. They could have kept that ball alive. That's a better pass from Courtney. Back set to Scott. Goes over the top. And that's why they need that pass. She is a big arm for Penn State. Here comes the pass right on the money to Micah Hancock. There are two blockers there, but Ariel Scott makes them look like they're not even there, and that's because one of them, Cassie Strickland, is only 5'8". That's a great matchup for Penn State at the net. Lacey Fuller, the junior from San Diego, on to serve. 
Nagaris to Strickland. Got a touch and a point for Washington. And we should mention early on in this one, Karch, that the Huskies run a 6-2. So a little bit different offensively with Nagaris and Beals as their setters. And Beals enters the game now. So does Parker, or so does Munoz, I'm sorry. And so what they do is they always have three hitters at the net. Penn State goes with the traditional 5-1, although we're seeing more and more of the 6-2 with the recent changes in the substitution patterns in college volleyball. And there's Deja McClendon, the senior from Louisville. And it was actually a year or two ago that Coach Rose wanted to run a two-setter offense himself, but a couple of injuries and academic ineligibility, and he stuck with the Micah Hancock one-setter offense. Been very effective for them. Going to the middle, Liana Sebeldin, the sophomore out of Folsom, California. Sebeldin's Cibelda, uh, really been coming into her own in the middle. You can see that isolation play, trying to get one quick hitter in the middle of the court against one middle blocker in that same zone. Strong serve from Strickland. Penn State goes back to McClendon. Good read by McClendon. She'll get it back. Strickland there defensively. Beals bumps it over to Van Sant. Diving chicken winger. Saves it for Fuller. Van Sant tries the tip. No. Back out to Van Sant. Got it. You know, you can go a long way. That's her fourth kill with just two shots. We saw her hit the seam one way. This time, she goes the deep corner, and it's rare that people plant themselves there on defense. She's doing a really strong job of mixing those shots up and hitting it flat and deep. Nothing down, so it's harder to stuff block those. Service error from Washington. And we'll remind you of our rules. It's best three of five. The first four sets would be to 25 points. The fifth set to 15. You have to win by two. 15 subs per set. You will often see the libero out there on the floor and the different colored jersey. They can do everything except attack. And they're primarily defenders and passers. And there's the ace for Penn State. And that's a few times now that Penn State has targeted Van Sant to try to make her carry more of the load, wear her down, make her pass the ball before she attacks the ball. Let's see if Mia Grant goes at her again. She doesn't get the ball to Van Zandt, so she only has to worry about hitting. Courtney saves it. Scott couldn't get a whole lot on that one. Back out to Van Zandt, off the block. And now it's Deja McClendon using the fingertips. Point Penn State. That's going to be a terrific matchup to see how often Penn State can get Katie Slay over there on Van Zandt. Yeah, absolutely, I like this assertive swing also by McClendon. Both the left side studs for these two teams coming out very assertive. And McClendon with a lot of good body language too. Looking her teammates in the eye, giving them a fist pump, getting them ready to go. Possibility cards tonight that we will see a lot of service errors because these two teams are going to take a lot of risks to try and get their opponents out of system. Or try too hard to get the ball to a certain player yes. like they were trying on Van Zandt. This is an interesting rotation because you only have Katie Slay on one side of the court and Deja McClendon on the other. So if they don't get a pass at all, it's tough to score, but when you do have a pass, wow, Micah Hancock as that third option. That's what's nice about having a left-handed setter. She can just stand there, jump, and swing. If she were right-handed, she'd have to do it softly, and she wouldn't be able to swing on that. Much more attack-minded as well in this NCAA tournament for Hancock, who follows up the kill with the ace. And we asked her yesterday, how's your serve been going? Because Coach Rose wasn't too fired up about how it's going. More cold than hot. And she even said, you know, it, it's going better. My, my uh, confidence in it is going better than the results have been. And now she creates another scoring opportunity. 
for Penn State. Cassie Strickland way out of bounds. And the serve was able to occupy Van Zant and take her out of an attacking presence. Hancock, daughter of an athlete, dad boxed, mom was a hooper at OK State. And she is helping Penn State to the lead here in the first best of five for a spot in the championship. Back here to a packed house, sold out key arena in Seattle National Semifinals. Penn State with the early lead over Washington. Let's take a look at planning for success. Brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. And how do these sides win, Karch? Well, Coach Rose talks about Penn State has so much even distribution. Any one of five hitters can carry the load, and they often have similar attempts, similar kills. And the other thing is, all every player said yesterday, we pride ourselves in the grind. It's not always going to be pretty, but we just keep pushing play after play. For Washington, Coach McLaughlin says it every single time before the match. Win the serve pass battle. Serve better than the other team, pass better than the other team. 6 1 run right here for Penn State. Both sides hitting over 350. Nice chase by Orlandini. Orlandini able to track it down. The back set this time, Scott cross court. And the other thing that McLaughlin emphasizes all the time is hit in, and that's why both these teams, they are hitting in very low errors, and they both come out hot in this match. Both of them high or both above 350. Yep. Anything above 300 is a very effective offensive number. And the stars are shining. McClendon and Scott and Van Sant, and now Micah Hancock, a couple of aces. They have taken eight of the last nine points. Remember, Washington does not watch this ball curve to your to our right, Krista Van Sant's left. They don't have a left-handed player on their team. They don't get to practice against this in their gym, and they're and it's given them a lot of trouble. That pass also. A great blocking opportunity for Penn State. Tough serving from Micah Hancock, who last year in the tournament set the record with 22 aces. Had been cold behind the service line in this postseason. Not anymore. A 9-1 Nittany Lion run as Hancock launches the ace. Capital One Bowl Week begins on Saturday with four games coming your way. Capital One Bowl Week Saturday on ESPN and ABC. Of course, up in these parts, uh, UW coach Steve Sarkeesian leaving to go to USC. And that is uh, one of the matchups. Southern Cal taking on Fresno State on Saturday afternoon as we roll into Bowl Week and uh, let the good times begin in the college football bowl season. National semifinals here in Seattle. 8-1 run for Penn State. And another poor pass from Washington. Another scoring opportunity for Penn State. Those bad passes allow a good blocker, but not so mobile, Katie Slay. At six foot six, the time to get in front of the hitter, intimidating and, and getting an out of bounds attack. A service show right now being put on by Micah Hancock. And now a chance finally for Van Sant, but the block slows it down. Out to Deja McClendon. Penn State is reaching a whole nother level right now. Wow, watch the face after McClendon rocks this ball. Look at how she comes down and gives her teammates a look in the eye, gives credit where it's due by the dig, by the serve, by the set. She is leading. Kylan Munoz, and that will slow things down for the moment. Penn State perhaps uh, buoyed by the performance of their Big Ten sisters earlier tonight. Wisconsin is playing for the national championship on Saturday. The 12 seed eliminated top seed Texas in our first semi. And what has been a banner year for the Big Ten trying to cap it off for the first time ever with both teams in the final. And as it should be with the dominance of the Pac-12 conference over the years, you've got a Pac-12 team standing in the way. 
And another Pac-12 team, Stanford, gave Penn State everything it could handle in that regional final last weekend. Transition here for the Huskies. Nelson missed it a little bit. Scott can't put it away. And Sant, no. Slay in the middle, a head shot. Yeah, you gotta, admi you gotta admire that Chris Van Sant <laughs> trying to provide some help here late. Doesn't get her hands over, and that's what happens. Take one right to the melon. Penn State hitting 430 now in this first set, and won't get a swing here. Chance for Washington. Nagara sets Wade in the middle, missed it wide. On the other side of the net, you gotta watch Jenna Orlandini. Lots of her teammates look to her to calm them down, feel like she's a, a rock and a steady presence. And she gives them exactly what they need, the pass to run their offense. Good get by Gonzalez. Scott tries to put it down. Penn State managing to take the crowd right out of it here in Seattle so far. And Scott has what we call a heavy arm. She follows through, and it's deceptive. You feel like you have it dialed in, you have it lined up, and then it rockets off your arms and into the stands. Good swing there from Kaylee Nelson, point lead up. See if Van Sant can get him going on a tear here. Serves it. Matt McClendon, slay. That's a mismatch at 6-6 against a solo. Well, one of the things that has helped Washington have such a good season is their tough serving. So far, they haven't been stressing the Penn State passers and offense yeah. enough. But that was a big upgrade. They've, they've gotten much tougher serving this year while still serving in at a very high level. What a nice swing there. Uh, number six for Washington, Kaylee Nelson. Well, you talked about the efficiency of the passing game right now for Penn State. And remember Russ Rose yesterday telling us, we, we can't help Washington. We need to limit our errors. And how about two points from the set with one hitting error so far here in the first? And Micah Hancock going on that huge service yeah. run to break this set, this first set wide open. Double block was there for Penn State. And they have blitzed Washington here in the first at set point. McGarris, Sabella in the middle and the solo for Grant. And what a start for the Nittany Lions on the road. Boy, you see them in their huddle, in their cheer. They are so close together.